Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Let us sing our praises together to the King of glory using hymn number 342. remain standing and find the liturgy book and turn to A57 for the liturgy for Palm Sunday. When we get to the Hosanna, we will sing the parts. The young people up front will sing the first part and the rest of the congregation will sing the second part. Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice all the earth. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Rejoice greatly, shout for joy. See your King is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. God of Israel, you came to the help of your people and have set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, a descendant of your servant David. You promised through your holy prophets long ago that you would save us from our enemies, from the power of all those who hate us. You have shown the mercy promised to our enemies. With a solemn oath to our ancestor Abraham, you promise to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve you without fear. So that we might be holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. 
By your tender mercy, you cause the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The voice of the messenger echoes from the desert, calling us to prepare the way of the Lord and to make a straight path on which he may come. Let us confess our sins so that our crooked ways will be made straight and the rough ways smooth. Our sovereign Lord, we join the people of Jerusalem, offering our own shouts of praise and celebration of your coming. Although we welcome you today with the multitude on Palm Sunday, we confess we have also stood Through John the baptizer, we hear the Lord's promise. Turn away from your sins, and God will forgive your sins. Eternal God, ruler of all ages, graciously you come to us in order that we might come to you through the merit of Jesus Christ, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. God of faith, you created humanity to serve and praise you. And even when we rebelled against you, You promised to send a Savior to redeem us from our sins. God of love, you fulfilled your promise of a Redeemer in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You comfort us through our Savior's promise to return in glory at the end of time. God of faith, love, and hope, to you and to you alone we pray.
Lord, you who have kept the promise you made to our ancestors and have come to the help of your servant people. We praise you, Lord. You are enthroned in glory, yet you came and continue to come for all who will receive you. We praise you, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. seated. I'd like to invite any other young people who are not here, they can come up and join us. And it'd be good for somebody to make room for me here in the middle. Coming in, coming in, coming in. There we go. Oops. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Yeah, don't want to get sat on. Mm. We'll wait for anybody else to show up. All right. Well, good morning. Oh, we still got more coming? Come on, Elise. You're holding up the show. There you go. All right. Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. Hmm. Now, for some of you, this means, okay, it's seven days till Easter. Does anybody know what happens on Easter? Yes, Lily. The happy box opens up. That's right. <laughs> oh, Lily, I couldn't have primed that even better. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, of course, we, this is the week as we wait towards Jesus' resurrection on Easter morning. So we had a great time today. Every, uh, who all got to make uh, our own palms today? Raise your hands high, yeah. So we've got them over there, and you, you laid them at the foot of the cross, and you're certainly welk, welcome to take them home uh, when we're done with worship today. Um, I fa- we found out already that these can be used effectively as bats. Um, they're also good at poking them in your sister's face and annoying her. Um, so, but but uh, we had a lot of fun, and we want to thank Mrs. Michael for teaching us how to make these. So I learned something this past week. I was in the wonderful warm state of Florida. Yes, you can be jealous of me right now. And, you know, while I was down there, I got thinking about Palm Sunday coming up. And, you know, spending a lot of time in living my life, of course, in the Midwest, you know, we come to Palm Sunday and we get those little green things. Now, everybody out there, you've got your palm? Show the kids. See, see their palms? Yeah. So you always think, well, you know, you got a palm tree. Well, when I was in Florida, do you know how many kinds of palm trees there are? There's a lot of different kinds of palm trees. Some of them have little skinny leaves, and some of them have gigantic leaves, and some of them are as big as cars. And I couldn't believe the variety of palms that there were. But the thing that we always remember about Palm Sunday is that Jesus was riding into Jerusalem, and to welcome him, what the crowds did is they gathered up the palms that were there, and they used those as a way to recognize and to sing praises uh, about his coming into Jerusalem. And so a reminder to us is that, you know, if Jesus was riding into our town, we wouldn't have palms to raise. Um, Of course, even this time of year, we'd be lucky if we had any kind of branches to be waving. But but the thing is, is that we always remember that we need to welcome Jesus as he comes into our lives with with any way that we can. And so throughout this week, I know I look forward to the opportunity for our church to to, uh, walk this journey of Holy Week. We are Easter people as Moravians. I was just talking to some of the folks in our church, and it's so important to us. This this celebration of this week is the pinnacle, the most important time of our entire faith year, and so we look forward to celebrating it together. So let's bow for a word of prayer. Lord, be with us this Holy Week. We thank you for the opportunity to sing the Hosanna and to pray together, um, to offer our praises to you. Help us to be faithful followers of you as we come and look forward to Easter morning. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up and thanks for singing so beautifully this morning. This is the, uh, the second year that uh, Laura Michael has taught us how to make these little palms. I failed dismally last year. This, this year isn't much better. I, I don't know what it is. I, I, many of us are given many different kinds of gifts. Art was not one of mine. I'm not sure how I'm going to tie that into the offering time, except to say that maybe if you give enough money today, we can send the associate pastor to art remedial school. (laughs) (laughs) No, in all seriousness, this is a Sunday when we celebrate the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem and, and also into our lives. So let us recognize his importance recognize that he is the Son of God, and give thanks to our Lord for the gift of Jesus with our tithes and our offerings this morning.
pray. Gracious Lord, we bring you these humble gifts and thanksgiving for the gift of Jesus Christ in our life. And although we celebrate Palm Sunday and his entry into Jerusalem today, we know because we do this every year that there are dark days yet to come. So we ask that you be with us through the Holy Week, that you help us to worship you, to acknowledge our failures before you during the week, and that you lead us to that great joy of Easter morning next Sunday. In the prayers of the people this morning, Lord, we have uh, Derek and Jenna Jenner John, who have new twins in their family. We ask that you bless them that you bring them health and joy, and that you bring them to visit us soon. We would also acknowledge that there are several in our congregation who are suffering from illness during this holiday season, and we would ask that you be with them, that you bring them healing, and that you bring them comfort. And Lord, please be with all those from our church family who are traveling, and grant them safe travels as they go to visit family, and to take vacations. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Mark 11, 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell them, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. 
They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some of the people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest! Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's fun to be a Badger basketball fan right now. Are you shocked I have a sermon today about the Final Four? Well, I'm touching on it. You know, it's a great thing. It's a great thing when when the team that you root for, that you care about, when it gets, when it's really good at what it does and it gets national recognition. But you know what's even better? What means even more is when you watch them succeed while they seem to represent the values and the things that, that you cherish and appreciate. The team that plays for the university this year are a team made up of young men, many of whom were overlooked and underrated by other big schools in the country. They were chosen by a coach who believed first and foremost that they would be good students at the academically challenging University of Wisconsin. A coach who believed that that they as individuals would buy into a system. Young men who would work hard, young men who would put their team first, who would make sacrifices for one another. You see, friends, those values, I think, speak to the very core of the things that we treasure and value as Badgers, as Wisconsinites, certainly that we value as people of faith. During an interview this last week, Wisconsin coach Bo Ryan said all those things about his players, and then he said what I thought was the most amazing thing of all. The uh, reporter, as reporters always do, they asked him after they had beaten North Carolina to advance to the Elite Eight, and the question was, isn't this why you coach? referencing this win, isn't this what you coach for? And Bo Ryan said, no. He said, this is really nice, but no, no. And then he went on to explain. He said the reason that he coaches is because of the relationships that he has with the young men that he coaches. He coaches for the practices and for the hours spent together. He coaches for working together to try to become the very best 
that they can be together. He coaches for the friendships. He coaches for the opportunity to watch boys grow into being men. And he said then that is what it's about. Regardless, friends, of wins and losses, that will always remain. So many people, so many of us in this life, we crave and yearn for those shining moments in the sun, for that place where we can have that adulation that we would punch our ticket to the final four and whatever that may be for us in life. And often, many may become bitter because they feel as if they never have that moment. They never attain it. But friends, the thing about that shining moment is it's just that, a moment. So what a breath of fresh air it is. Yes, there are still people in this world who keep their feet on the ground, who keep their eye on the prize that truly matters. And that is what it means, I think, to be a a person who lives their life not just for the circumstances of the moment, not for the fading glory or those transient things that the world will tell us, bring us value and purpose. No, to keep our eyes on the prize and our feet on the ground means that we are a mission-driven people. You see, the payoff for one's work is not merely a paycheck. It is not recognition or adulation. What matters is accomplishing deeper values, longer vision, and a greater good. On Palm Sunday, we read the account, we reenact the adulation of the crowds welcoming Jesus to Jerusalem. We wave our palms. We remember that they sang and cried out, Hosanna. But as we do this, we also know as Christians that Jesus' eyes and his heart were fixed on a cross waiting for him at the end of that week. They welcomed him as a king, yet he chose to ride into their city gates on the most humble beast that could be found, a donkey. An irony explained in our lesson from Philippians. You see, while the crowds cried, Hosanna, Jesus, we are told in Philippians, made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Palm Sunday is Jesus opening the door to accomplishing what he had come to do, to take our sin to die on our behalf, to gain our forgiveness, and to put us right with the God who made us, to be a servant for all. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death. I think that's a good definition of humility. What is a humble person? Friends, a humble person does not live for recognition. To live a humble life means that that we are those in this world who keep our eyes on the big prize, who keep our feet on the ground, the ones that focus on the things that matter. That mother who, who is dead tired from work and yet still works late into the night, making sure everything is perfect for her children and when they rise and go to school in the morning. It's that, that friend who always manages to pick up the check at lunch. It's the friend who patiently listens to the 100th time to that anxious friend's worries and concerns while she's lugging a barge full of her own. It's the guy who is always the last one to leave, the last one out of the shop, not because he has to be, but because the job needs to be done, and it needs to be done right. There are humble people that surround us every day. They may never hear the voices of the adulation of the crowds, They may never get to climb up on that proverbial stepladder like the Badgers did last night and snip off that little piece of the net. Yet they quietly make a difference every day. They touch the lives of others every day. They serve God every day. They continue to do the right things for the right reasons. 
We are told in our lesson today, your very attitude needs to be the same as Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on that very nature of a servant. While the crowds cried, Hosanna, Jesus' eyes were on the cross. As his disciples, so we are called to do as we are told elsewhere in Scripture, to deny ourselves, to pick up our crosses, and to follow. While on vacation this past week, I I read an account. It was a harrowing account of the second Marines and their landing at Tarawa in the Pacific in World War II. It was a terrible battle. The Marines were slaughtered by the Japanese as they tried to land on this tiny island in the Pacific And there were hundreds of them dead, and there were hundreds more who were wounded and trapped, floating in the water or laying on a very narrow strip of sand. And the most heart-wrenching part of this account for me is that the assault stopped as darkness fell. And those who were wounded, though, to those waiting in ships and those all around, they were astounded because all they heard was silence. You see... Those who were wounded and dying refused to cry out. Throughout that long, hellish night, they refused to cry out because they knew if they would that their comrades would rush to their aid and in doing so would be shot down as they had been. And so they chose silence rather than put their friends, their comrades, in jeopardy. In silence, they suffered that hellish horrific night, and many, many perished until dawn came. And those that could rose with a new attack, and they took that beach. When I read such accounts of sacrifice such as this, it touches me deeply. Because I cannot imagine the courage that is involved to Surrender my desire or my concern or my pain in order to save and care for and consider others. Would I ever have such courage? In my life, friends, I can point to the places where I have lost my way. And I can tell you they are always the times when I got wrapped up in what I wanted. And when my life becomes about me and not about the mission that I have been called to live, those are the times and the places that I have been lost. Well, Christ has a mission for all of us, to live for him. And by living for him, we are to be set free from those things that really don't matter as we seek the things that really do. When we live for him, we can see through the distractions and achieve the prize that last. His kingdom come. His will be done. In the past weeks, another great basketball coach passed away, Dean Smith, the coach of North Carolina, who for many years raised up teams like the one that I praised from Wisconsin here earlier in my sermon today. I found it fascinating because he, uh, it was reported in the news media this past week that uh, they had settled his estate. All of the money that Dean Smith made, being a very, very successful coach, was divided up into $200 increments to go to every single of the w- one of the young men who ever played for him on one of his basketball teams. $200 to each one of his, his boys his players, and the reason for it was very simple, that he wanted them to go out to dinner on the coach and think of him. I raise that up to you, friends, because with all of the national championships and the glory that that man accrued and accrued for a program and all the millions of dollars that program probably made for the University of North Carolina, it's very clear that he always kept his eye on the prize, and what mattered was his relationship with those young men that he worked with keeping our eyes focused on what matters. 
Brothers and sisters, I hope and pray that we as Moravians are known in this community as the people who keep our eyes on what matters. That we are those who go forward every single day of our lives quietly doing the humble work of doing the right thing in the right place at the right time because this is the way that we give glory to God and this is how we live as his children in this world. And so we enter into this holy week, this week where we march and walk hand in hand with our Savior to the cross, remembering the greatest prize of all has been given freely to us with no strings attached. Amen. I invite us to stand together if we are able to sing our closing hymn number 343. Now may the grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and abide with you both now and forever. Amen.